Chapter 6 The Four Horsemen Revelation 6 verse 1 And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. The Lamb opened one of the seals, the Lamb is Jesus Christ, and seals are first mentioned in Revelation 5 verses 1 to 2. The noise of thunder, a seraphim speaking with a thundering voice. The four beasts, seraphim of Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3 In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Come and see, this phrase is used eight times, seven of them are by John himself. Psalm 66 verse 5, Come and see the works of God, he is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. It is used four of those eight times in this chapter, and it is only used of the first four seals. Apparently, there is a time for Israel to come and see some things, and there is time that it is too late for them to come and see. Revelation 6 verse 2 And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. A white horse, this rider is the Antichrist impersonating Jesus Christ. Matthew 24 verses 4 to 5, where Jesus prophesies many false Christs for the time of Jacob's trouble. While white is the color of surrender and peace, he will not be a peaceful man. He will use peace as a means to an end, and that end is the attempted destruction of Israel. In Daniel 11 verses 21 to 24, we read about this rider coming in peaceably and obtaining the kingdom with flatteries. And he that sat on him, nothing is said describing how the rider looks, just what he does with what is given to him. A bow, a bow is used for warfare, and not peace. As you may expect, he uses it, and is crowned to conquer many. A crown was given unto him, a position of power was given unto him. He did not have this power in him, because he is a created being. He went forth conquering and to conquer, to rule over people. Revelation 6 verses 3 to 4 And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. When he had opened the second seal, the he here is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that also opened the first seal. The second beast, the second of the four seraphim. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. Come and see, Israel's servants are to examine this writer and his deeds. Another horse that was read, Zechariah 1 colon 8, 6 colon 1 7, and Matthew 24 verse 6, where wars are predicted by Jesus for the time of Jacob's trouble. And power was given to him that sat thereon, power had to be given to him, because he is not all powerful as God is. A great sword, as more power is given to the Antichrist, he uses it to inflict death on as many people, in as short as time as possible, to send as many people to hell as he can. Revelation 6 verse 5 And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. He had opened the third seal, the he is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that had opened the first two seals already. A black horse, Matthew 24 verse 7, where famines are prophesied by Jesus for the time of Jacob's trouble. A pair of balances, this is probably the one world government stepping in with disaster relief after the plagues and wars. All the people will have to do to get help will be to take the mark, which will be the mark of the beast. Revelation 6 verse 6, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. The four beasts, seraphim of Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. A measure of wheat for a penny, 
A penny was a day's wages, according to Jesus, in Matthew 20 verse 2. Three measures of barley for a penny, Elisha gives us a little clue as to the meaning of this verse. 2 Kings 7 verses 1 to 18. He says with a shekel, you could get two measures of barley in Samaria the next day after the famine. A shekel today is about a quarter. So, three measures of barley for 37.5 cents is not bad, but the day before it would cost you a whole day's wages. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine, this phrase is used only one other time in scripture, and it is in the parable of the Good Samaritan, who binds up the wounds of a Jew and pours in oil and wine. There is even a horse in this story as well. Luke 10 verse 34. It was a voice in the midst of the for beasts, the seraphim, that says, See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. It could have been one of them, or it could have been Jesus himself. While things will be scarce, God will take care of the remnant, not by the religious, but by Samaritans and Gentiles who will bless Israel in that day. At the judgment of the nations, those nations that give food, water, and shelter to one of these my brethren, the Jewish believers, they will have done it unto Christ and will receive a reward. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Revelation 6 verse 7, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. He had opened the fourth seal, the he is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, from verse 1, who opens all four of these seals. The fourth beast, the fourth seraphim. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. Come and see, this is the last time a seraphim tells John to come and see. Israel, God's servants, is to examine this writer so they do not follow the Antichrist in that day. Revelation 6 verse 8 And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. A pale horse, it will be an unending cycle of death during this time, and half of the world's population will die as a result of the wars, plagues and famines caused by the Antichrist and his horde of demons. Matthew 24 verses 8-9, where Jesus prophesies death for many in the time of Jacob's trouble. Notice the color of the fourth horse, pale. The word pale comes from the Greek word chloros, it means green, or greenish. Chloros is used only five times in scripture, and four times it is translated green in Mark 6 verse 39, Luke 23 verse 31, Revelation 8 colon 7, 9 colon 4, and here is pale. His name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, power was given to death and hell over a quarter of the earth, and they used that power to kill people with war sword, hunger, sickness, and even the beasts of the earth. Revelation 20 verses 13 to 14. Isaiah 28 verse 15, Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. 18 And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down. So, we have the four horses each represented by a different color, white, red, black, and pale, greenish. Is there any significance to those four colors? What are the four colors of the flags of most of Israel's enemies today? White, red, black, and green. These colors represent the four caliphates that have ruled that area of the world at one time or another. The devil had the power of death. Hebrews 2 verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Contrast that verse with this one. Revelation 1 verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 6 verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. 
He had opened the fifth seal, the He is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that had opened the previous seals. Notice that there is no fifth seraphim mentioned here to tell John to come and see, that is because God is not describing the rider on another horse this time. That time has passed. Now John sees the results of this rider. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, this is the altar of incense, used to offer up the prayers of the saints to God. Matthew 24 verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The altar in that first tabernacle in the wilderness was really just a shaded picture of the real one in heaven, where the souls that were slain were kept by God as a constant reminder to God of their sacrifice. These souls were those of the tribulation saints that were martyred for their faith in Christ and their obedience to the word of God. Notice it says the souls of them that were slain, and not their bodies. We have a soul that looks similar to how our body looks. These martyred souls were not out in heaven, just going to and fro, but they were being held for the time being under the altar of God. This was most likely a window into paradise where God has these precious souls always on his mind, and in his sight, who will stand strong in the time of the great tribulation period. Their souls would be awaiting the resurrection that would unite them with their bodies to rule and reign on the earth in the kingdom. And for the testimony which they held, the word testimony means a witness that told what they saw and knew. Some people can witness something, but they never testify as to what they saw. These did, and they lost their life for it. Revelation 6 verse 10, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? They cried with a loud voice, these cries were their prayers for vengeance, not for themselves, but for God's holiness, which demanded a just recompense for their sin. Prayers were to be heard by God at the altar of incense. Their prayers will be answered by God when the seventh seal is opened in Revelation 8 verses 1 to 5. God is long-suffering and just and not willing that any should perish, and those followers of the devil will get what is coming to them. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge, judging and avenging are separate, but related things. 1 Samuel 24 verse 12, The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. And avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth, Deuteronomy 32 verse 43, Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land, and to his people. Revelation 6 verse 11 And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. White robes, Daniel 12 verse 10, speaks about robes being made white. Daniel 12 verse 10 Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Their fellow servants, they are the brethren that are killed in the tribulation period, they are the saved Jews that are slain during this time. A little season, this phrase is only used twice in the scriptures, and both are found in the book of Revelation. Revelation 20 verse 3 since the tribulation period lasts only seven years, and we can conclude that the little season will be considerably shorter than that, then we can assume that the little season mentioned in Revelation 20 verse 3 is a similar amount of time. Their fellow servants, in Matthew 18 verses 21 to 35, we see one of only a few times that the word fellow servants is mentioned in it. The fellow servants are the good who repent and follow the Son like the remnant in those days. Their brethren, the servant in Matthew 18 verses 21 to 35 is unjust and unforgiving. Those who are like him will die, sooner or later at the hands of Satan or the plagues, but then they will spend an eternity in torment for their rebellion. Revelation 6 verse 12 And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. He had opened the sixth seal, 
the He is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that had opened the four previous seals. A Great Earthquake This of course is the complete fulfillment of the prophecies of Joel, which Peter mentioned in Acts 2. The prophecies he quoted were only partially fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Matthew 24 verse 7, where Jesus prophesies earthquakes for the time of Jacob's trouble. Isaiah 13 verse 13, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Haggai 2 verses 6 and 21, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. The sun became as black as sackcloth of hair, the sun did not change as described in Joel or Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, but it will on a future day of Pentecost in the tribulation period. The moon became as blood, the moon did not change as described in Joel or Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, but it will on a future day of Pentecost in the tribulation period. Revelation 6 verses 13 to 14 And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The stars of heaven fell to the earth, this is a reference to the fallen angels, demons, that held positions in the heavens, which they received from Satan, who will be removed from them by force. They will be gathered for their future punishment. Revelation 12 verse 4 And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. As a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, Satan and his minions are nothing to God. They are like figs falling from a tree in a mighty wind. God is going to shake the heavens, as he said he would in Isaiah, to shake out these usurpers. Isaiah 34 verse 4 And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Isaiah 13 verse 13 Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 17, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? This is the bottomless pit, it only has sides. Matthew 24 verse 29 Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The heaven departed as a scroll, at that moment, the darkness that rules the heavens will be rolled back, a curtain of darkness, and the inhabitants of this earth will see the Lord on his throne in heaven. Verse 16 also speaks of this amazing time when the earth will be able to see into the very throne room of God. The lost will flee and run and hide, they will be afraid to look at the face of him they had cursed for so long. Isaiah 34 verses 4 to 5 And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Revelation 6 verses 15 to 17 And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, 
and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, Isaiah 2 verse 21, to go into the clefts of the rocks, and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. The great day of his wrath, this is the day of the Lord that has been promised in the Old Testament, when Christ returns to claim this world as his own. Chapter 6 is in chronological order, and it takes you through the tribulation period, but it skips over many details, and takes us to the day of judgment. Isaiah 2 verse 19 And they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Chapter 7 the sealing of the 144,000 Revelation 7 verse 1 And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. For angels standing, these will hurt the earth and the sea after the 144,000 are sealed. These are not to be confused with the four angels that were bound in the great river Euphrates in Revelation 9 verse 14. The four corners of the earth, the earth does not have corners. You do not live on a square-shaped planet. Genesis 28 verse 14 says that Israel is spread abroad to the north, south, east, and west, and in Isaiah 11 verse 12 it says that Israel is dispersed to the four corners of the earth, and they will be reassembled in their land. It means they were standing in four directly different positions. The four winds of the earth, they are mentioned as being from the four quarters of heaven in Jeremiah 49 verse 36. In Ezekiel 37 verse 9, they are used to bring life back to a bunch of dry bones. Daniel 7 verse 2 mentions them as striving upon the great sea. Daniel 8 verse 8, Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Zechariah 2 verse 6, Ho, ho, come forth, and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Matthew 24 verse 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. That the wind should not blow on the earth, God is merciful even in the time of great tribulation and he will hold back his vengeance to ensure those who have found grace in his Son would be protected. Revelation 7 verse 2 And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. I saw another angel ascending from the east, John saw an angel ascending from the east, which probably meant he was ascending to heaven. This seal of the living God, this is the name of God written on the foreheads of the 144,000. The seal is mentioned in Ezekiel 9 verses 1 to 11 as a mark. Since God has a mark, the Antichrist has to have one. Ezekiel 9 verses 4 to 6, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite, let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity, slay utterly old and young, both maids, and little children, and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. The four angels, it was given to them to hurt the earth and the sea. These are not the same four angels as the ones bound in the great river Euphrates in Revelation 9 verse 14. Revelation 7 verses 3 to 4, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads, 144,000 Jewish male virgins are sealed with God's name in their foreheads. They go about doing His will throughout the first half of the tribulation period, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. 
Matthew 24, verse 14. These 144,000 are immune from the calamities that will befall the children of this world. These are not the only ones who get saved in the tribulation period, but are the firstfruits of that age. They are a special group that will have a special ministry around the throne of God in eternity. There were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand, twelve times twelve is one hundred and forty and four. Their jobs in the kingdom will correlate with their jobs that they had on the earth during the tribulation period. Revelation 7 verse 5 of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. The tribe of Judah, Judah is mentioned first, even though Reuben is the firstborn, because it is the tribe of the kings of Israel, from which Christ came. Revelation 7 verses 6 to 8 of the tribe of Azar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephilim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasses were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasses were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Manasses replaces the tribe of Dan, who is missing from this list. Also, Ephraim is not listed. The reason is that the tribe of Dan was totally given over to idolatry, and it is excluded from this privileged group who have a special ministry in the future. 1 Kings 12 verses 29 to 30, And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. The tribe of Dan will be brought back into their earthly inheritance in the kingdom. Ezekiel 48 verses 1 to 2, 32, Now these are the names of the tribes. From the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlin, as one goeth to Hamath, Hazarenan, the border of Damascus northward, to the coast of Hamath, for these are his sides east and west, a portion for Dan. And by the border of Dan, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Asher. And at the east side four thousand and five hundred, and three gates, and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. Dan will of course be a smaller tribe than the rest of the tribes in the kingdom because Dan does not have 12,000 Danites sealed as do the other tribes during the tribulation period, and it will suffer numerically because of that. Joseph's eldest son, Manasseh, did not receive the blessing from Jacob because it went to his younger brother Ephraim instead. Genesis 48 verses 15 to 22 And here he receives this honor over his younger brother. Ephraim descendants are considered those of Joseph's lineage. Joseph still gets two portions, thanks to the tribe of Dan. Revelation 7 verses 9 to 10 After this I beheld, and, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. After this, after the sealing of the one hundred and forty and four thousand. A great multitude, the words after this, denote a space of time that has elapsed, three and a half years, from the time of the sealing of the one hundred and forty-four thousand, and the time that the tribulation saints sing praises unto God, prior to entering into their earthly kingdom. The connection of these two groups in the same chapter seems to indicate the possibility that the 144,000 witnesses were considered prominently in this multitude praising Christ, along with all the other tribulation saints that were martyred for their faith. Clothed with white robes, Daniel 12 verse 10 about robes being made white and palms in their hands, Leviticus 23 verse 40 and ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. John 12 verse 13 took branches of palm trees, and went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
Revelation 7 verses 11 to 12 And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might. Be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. The Four Beasts, Seraphim of Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. Revelation 7 verses 13 to 14 And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. One of the elders, one of the four and twenty elders. Revelation 4 10, 5 colon 8. 14, 11, 16, and 19, colon 4. What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Notice that they came out of great tribulation, which is a reference to the second half of the tribulation period. Their robes were made white in the blood of the Lamb, while God operates differently in different dispensations, it is still His blood that washes away every sin. Daniel 12 verse 10 about robes being made white. And have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 1 verse 5 And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Revelation 7 verses 15 to 16 Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Therefore, are they before the throne of God, these tribulation saints minister in the temple after the time of great tribulation. They will be taken care of as no one ever was. John is seeing things here that are occurring after the tribulation period. They shall hunger no more. They will be filled who hungered after righteousness, instead of taking the mark of the beast to get a meal. Neither thirst any more, those who thirsted after righteousness, instead of taking the mark of the beast, will be filled. Revelation 7 verse 17 For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, they shall hunger no more, because the Lamb will feed them. Isaiah 53 verse 7 He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Jesus is called the Lamb of God in John's Gospel, while the other three Gospels use different titles to describe him. John then continues this imagery of Jesus as the Lamb in Revelation 27 more times, beginning in chapter 5. Living Fountains of Waters These will not thirst any more because in the kingdom Jesus will lead them unto fountains of living waters. He actually is the fountain of living waters. Jeremiah 2 verse 13 For my people have committed two evils, they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Zechariah 14 verse 8 And it shall be in that day, that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and in winter shall it be. Many in Israel in the past forsook Jesus, who is the fountain of living waters, and unfortunately, this will happen again in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 2 verse 13 For my people have committed two evils, they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. They trusted in their own works to supply their needs, but the cisterns they dug could not hold any water. Jeremiah 17 verse 13 O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. We do not need to partake of the tree of life as these will, nor do we need to drink of these living waters as we already have eternal life today in the dispensation of grace. God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, this is speaking about the saints who die in the tribulation period, 
who will have endured the most terrible time of tribulation anyone has ever seen. Chapter 8 The Seventh Seal, Revelation 8 verse 1 And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. He had opened the seventh seal, the He is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that had opened the six previous seals mentioned in chapter 6. Silence in heaven, the silence was due to the awesome vengeance that was about to fall upon the earth for the martyring of the saints whose souls have been crying out to God from underneath the altar in Revelation 6 verse 9. Revelation 8 verse 2 And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. The seven angels which stood before God, these are the seven angels which are the seven messengers to the seven churches mentioned in Revelation 1 verses 16 and 20, and chapters 2 to 3. To them were given seven trumpets, these are used to make a pronouncement that something new was about to take place. Revelation 8 verse 3, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Another angel came and stood at the altar, the altar of incense, in Exodus 30 verse 27. Also called the golden altar, in verse 3. Here we see the altar, and the throne of God in heaven, that are mentioned in chapter 7, which will remain in heaven, even when the city of New Jerusalem comes down to earth during the millennium. Jesus will be interceding on Israel's behalf as their high priest during the tribulation period concerning their prayers. A golden censer, censers were torches used for light. Here the censer would be lit first, and then used to light the incense on the altar. Much incense, much incense is used, because the incense represents the prayers of the saints. Much prayer will be offered up from saints at this terrible time. Revelation 6 verse 9 Revelation 21 verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. The prayers of all the saints, as seen in Revelation 6 verse 9. It is possible that the servants that were slain in the great tribulation period, will minister in the presence of God and the Lamb on earth in the kingdom. Just not in the city of New Jerusalem. So, it would be consistent that these saved martyrs of the tribulation period would minister where the Lamb is ruling on earth, and not in the temple in heaven. Revelation 8 verses 4 to 5 And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth, and there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. The smoke of the incense, when God was not pleased with the odor of incense, which represented mankind's sin, he immediately responds in righteous judgment as we see about to take place here. When God was pleased with the incense, then the nation of Israel was blessed and the world with them. The prayers of the saints, his response here is to the prayers offered up by the tribulation saints mentioned in Revelation 6 verses 9 to 10. The censer, also called the golden censer above, was a torch for carrying the fire from the lampstand to the altar of incense. And cast it to the earth, a tempest of hail. Verse 7 below. Isaiah 28 verse 2, Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which is a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. There were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, this phrase is mentioned four other times in the book of the Revelation. Revelation 4, 5, 11, 19, and 16, 18. This time, the order of their appearance is reversed. Exodus 19, verse 16, And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And an earthquake, this time an earthquake is mentioned as part of God's punishment for those who were killing his servants. Revelation 8 verses 6 to 7 And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. 
The seven angels, these are the angels of the seven churches of Asia, mentioned in chapters 2 and 3. The first angel sounded, this is the angel of the church of Ephesus. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, one third of all the trees will be burned up, and all the grass will be consumed at this time, near the close of the tribulation. The blood that is mingled with it will be a result of this hail fire, which would also account for the enormous loss of life we read about in other portions of scripture related to this time. Isaiah 28 verse 2, Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which is a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. A tempest of hail. This could be more centrally located around the nations surrounding Israel than worldwide, or it could be across the whole planet. Verse 7 says that the hail fire was cast upon the earth, but it does not say upon the whole earth. I believe it will span at least the three continents surrounding Israel. Was there hail fire in Moses' day? Yes. Exodus 9 verse 24, So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. Revelation 8 verse 8, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. The second angel sounded, this would be the angel of the church of Smyrna. As it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, this was around the Mediterranean Sea, and not the whole earth. This also happened in Moses' day, to the Nile River. The third part of the river became blood, Exodus 7 verse 18, And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe thee to drink of the water of the river. Revelation 8 verse 9, And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, and had life, died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. The third part of the creatures which were in the sea, and had life, died, this probably happens when the fiery mountain hits initially. This is part of the reason why the kingdom is referred to as the regeneration in Matthew 19 verse 28 and Acts 3 verses 19 to 21. The earth will have to be regenerated after all of this happens. Did any creatures in the Nile die in Moses' day? Yes. Exodus 7 verse 18. The third part of the ships were destroyed, the ripple effect of the massive tidal wave caused by the great burning mountain crashing into the seas will capsize a third of the ships in the sea. Revelation 8 verse 10, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. The third angel sounded, this would be the angel of the church in Pergamos. A great star, this star could be a large meteor, that falls and breaks up upon entry into Earth's atmosphere and pollutes one-third of the rivers and fountains. It could also be a fallen angel, which are called stars in the Bible, who do indeed fall from heaven. See the next chapter for more on this. The third part of the rivers, a third part of the rivers that run into the sea, Mediterranean, would have the backwash of this great mountain, combined with the salt water that overflows into the rivers, and together they will kill much in the rivers. The fountains of waters, the underground aquifers where the rivers also get much of their water supply from. Revelation 8 verse 11, And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. The third part of the waters became Wormwood, this is possibly a broken up star or meteor that falls from the heavens and breaks up over that area which poisons all the water it hits, or it is some sort of fallen angel that has power to hurt these waters. The name of the star is called Wormwood. Wormwood is mentioned numerous times in the Old Testament, and it is always associated with something bitter or poisonous. It is translated as hemlock in Amos 6 verse 12, a very poisonous plant. The poisonous water will not harm gods. Servants that believe Jesus is the Christ, because he promised that these signs would follow them in those days, not in our days. Mark 16 verse 18, They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Revelation 8 verse 12, And the fourth angel sounded, 
and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so, as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. The fourth angel sounded, this would be the angel of the church in Thyatira. The theme here is the phrase one-third, which leads many to believe that this punishment is reserved for the one-third of the world centered around Israel, Europe, and Africa. It could be America is preserved the brunt of these terrible judgments, but I doubt it. America has turned so far from God in her later years. Revelation 8 verse 13 And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Woe, woe, woe. The three woes are mentioned in the next two chapters. With every tragedy, there follows an even worse aftermath, due to disease and famine. The first woe is in Revelation 9, and it is the locusts that come out of the pit. The second woe ends in Revelation 11 verse 14. The third woe begins in Revelation 12 verse 12. Satan has been thrown out of heaven here, and because of all the chaos, the world cries out for help.